Cecilia McDowell has spread her musical imagination wide to create a large variety of works, from choral, orchestral and chamber music. The opera Airborne was written for the 100th anniversary of the beginning of the First World War. The opera itself is based on fact, on diaries, but Andy Rashley, the librettist, has cleverly brought it all together so that there's an interlocking between two characters, between a nurse and between a pilot. I wanted to keep it fairly simple. It was only a half hour commission, and I suppose that's one of the things that's, uh, that's crucial for every composer. Uh, you, you're guided by time. You know how much time you have. Um, to write more than is necessary then makes programming complicated. I decided a long time ago that I wanted to be a composer, but somehow events just didn't work that way. And I fell into teaching. I taught at uh, Trinity College and New Hilly Menion School and various other places. Um, and then, of course, having a family uh, made it a little more complicated. So I just delayed it all and came to it really rather late. I suppose the moment of reality is when somebody commissions a piece. It all seems to have happened, one thing unfolding from another. She's dedicated to finding a new sound world for each work, often stimulated by extra musical inspirations, as in this piece, Le Temps Viendra. I read an article about Anne Boleyn's Book of Hours, and one of the pages, The Day of Judgment, had her handwriting, very delicate handwriting, Le Temps Viendra, which of course means the time will come, she obviously knew what was scheduled for her. She was perhaps very superstitious. I, I had a feeling that I could perhaps draw something from this because it seemed so compelling, uh, something that would have a premonition of her death. Mixing mythology with biblical, I somehow thought that if she is leaving Earth and going to Underworld, that she perhaps travels on her boat um, with the ripples of the, the water and the dark, dark water um, from Earth to, to the underworld, which of course is going across the sticks. Inspired by a Hiller Belloc poem, this concertante, Great Hills, is scored for violin, two flutes and strings, the same lineup as Bach's fourth Brandenburg concerto. I suppose always one's writing for different forces, for amateur forces, professional forces, um, and I think possibly the demands there are really keeping an eye on things that are technically within the player's grasp. But then there's also this other aspect of writing a piece that will go with something else and Great Hills, particularly the first movement, is written in such a way that it's a sort of companion piece for Brandenburg IV. My father was principal flute at the Royal Opera House for many years and he was also a solo flautist too. There was always music around me and it was um, a wonderful, wonderful way of hearing music firsthand. Vespers in Venice was inspired by the painter Turner. Turner's depiction of Venice, and he did many paintings of Venice, and this particular one was Approach to Venice. It's an extraordinary painting because you can see it's night on one side and it's still daytime on the other, and you can see St Mark's Venice. So I, I've taken little bits, a snippet, out of Monteverdi's Vespers. Each time, one's 
creating not a new language because we each have our own identity, but we are creating a new world, really, a new soundscape, which is the exciting bit and the daunting bit.